Hello, I'm Tanya, and I'd like to share with you today on a, a thought, a small, a short thought on Rosh Hashanah and the complexity of our existence. And I want to begin by thinking about the idea of tshuva. If we think about the word tshuva, it actually doesn't necessarily mean repentance as it's often translated in English. Tshuva literally means an answer or a response or a reply. And in many ways, we are responding, replying, answering to God's call. The very first call of God to man was Ayeka, where are you? Not where are you in a geographical sense, for he knew obviously where Adam and Chava were. Where are you in a metaphorical sense, in a psychological, mental, spiritual sense? Where are you deep inside you? Look into yourself. The moment Adam and Chava eat from the tree of knowledge they have they begin to have a duality of self a split between the internal and the external and i want to speak for a moment about the concept of man man as we know there are two chapters in bereshit in genesis chapter one and chapter two very often the biblical critics say you know they're written by two different authors rav soloveitchik threw that aside and immediately said no beauty of the Torah is that it expresses for us the complexity of our being. And rather than this being two accounts of two different authors, this is actually two accounts of the same person. Each and every one of us have within ourselves an Adam 1 and an Adam 2. An Adam 1 that is created with Selem Elohim. He is created in the image of God and he is told to go out and conquer the world. He is told to be dignified and to have splendor and to create cures to diseases and to make the world a better place. That's Adam 1. That is the mandate of creativity. That is what it is to be created in the image of God. Adam 2, in Genesis 2, is created not in the image of God, but from the dust of the earth. Adam too, in Rav Soloveitchik's language, is an existential man, is covenantal man, is man that is constantly feeling that he is lacking something. In a sense, perhaps we'll use the language of uh, Leonard Cohen, there's a crack, a crack in everything, that's how the light gets in. Adam too is broken, Adam too knows, because he is created from the dust of the earth, that he too will become the dust of the earth, that he is mortal. In Heidegger's word, in Heidegger's language, he is moving towards, or constantly moving towards death. That we know that the very essence of our being, the very fact that we are created as human beings, and we know that we will eventually decease, that is that mortality, that slap in the face, that is the very, very, um, the crisis that each and every human goes on when they come face to face at some point, and it can be at any point with our mortality. Kate Camus, the famous existential literary um, writer, wrote, there's only one really serious philosophical question, and that is suicide. And though that sounds terribly depressing, to a degree, the rabbis understood, actually, that when we come face to face with our mortality, that often awakens, awakens within us the deep questions, the deep response, the teshuva, the response, the reply to the Ayeka question. And we know that in the Unatana Tokhev prayer and many other prayers that we say on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, we express this feeling of being the dust of the earth, of being mortal, of perhaps the fragmentary nature of our being. Right? We're told, we say in an Antana Tokhev, Adam Yisadom Yafal, the Sofola Afal. We know that the very essence of our being is dust. We are fleeting, as Kohelet says. There's nothing that's nothing that's permanent in our world. So how do we manage that oscillation between Adam 1 and Adam 2? Between the mandate to go out and be dignified and have hubris to a degree and conquer the world, and the mandate to know that ultimately we're just a fleeting speck of dust. And I think in many ways the shofal echoes exactly these two elements of our being. The shofal, we know we move from tkia, trua, shvarim, tkia. We move through the blast and the first blast is wholeness. That's what we're like when we first come into the world. Perhaps even as children, as teenagers, we think the world is complete and whole. We think we can go out and conquer it. We are 
the Adam one, right? We are climbing in, in David Brooks's language of the second mountain, the first mountain, we're going up, we're conquering, we're trying to get what we can from the world. But at some point, we come face to face with the fact that our existence is fleeting and that actually we're the dust of the earth and that Adam two voice starts coming out, starts ringing in our ears. Who are you? What's the purpose of our being? What's the meaning of our existence? Why are we in this world? And then we begin to go through the trua and the shwarim, the brokenness and the crisis. But ultimately, and I believe that this is what part of the cyclical year and Rosh Hashanah and Yamim Noraim, the days of awe, not just the fear. Fear is that moment when we come face to face with the blast, right? We know that face to face, the minute we hear the blast of the Shofar, all of a sudden awakens us. That's the fear. But the awe is born out of that fear. The awe is the moment when we realize and we understand that though the world may be fleeting and though that our existence may be fleeting, we are in awe of the beauty of what God has given us. And that all leads us to a greater wholeness. When we ask the questions of meaning, when we ask the questions of our existence, that leads to a new tikkia, a new wholeness of our being, in which we have given space, we have given a nod to the shvarim, we have given a nod to the crisis. We know that we are Adam too. And yet, when we go back to being Adam 1, when we go and conquer the world, this time it's with a deep knowledge of who we are, a deep purpose, a deep sense of being, a deep sense that we have something to do, that we have a mission to go and to achieve. We know that the Shofar itself has two purposes in the Torah. In Sefer Bamidbar, a uh, Perak Yud in chapter 10 of Sefer Bamidbar, we're told that the Shofar is used on the one hand, for bringing the people together, for coronation of kings, for dignity, for splendor. And at the same time, it's also used to warn us of an impending enemy, of war. It is used for moments of joy, for moments of majesty. And it's used for moments in which we have to come face to face with the fact that everything is uncertain. We don't know what will happen the next moment. And danger is always around the corner. These are not, these are not two different things. These are two things in and of themselves. Adam 1 and Adam 2 are not two different people. They both exist within our very being. The Trukia and the Trua and the Shvarim are not two separate blasts. They all come together. It is the very messy, complex experience of being a human being. And in that way, if we actually tap in to both of those elements of self, to both of the sounds of the shofar, to both of the um, warning signs that the shofar gives us, one of majesty, joy, splendor, and one of war, in that way, we will be able to actually come before Hashem in our brokenness, in our shevel, Shevel, mashbel, crisis, is also the word used for a birthing storm. A mashbel is the moment in which I feel as if I'm going to die. I cannot take the pain anymore. And I say to God, just take me. I am nothing. I am totally the dust of the earth. And at that moment, that moment of mashbel, that is the moment that something is born. That cry of brokenness is the moment in which something is opened. There is a crack, says Leonard Cohen. That's where the light comes in. And if we are able to understand that and we are able to move forward, then we will come to Hashem and we will say to Hashem, we come to you. Karov Hashem lev. Hashem is close to those who are brokenhearted. And with that, we come and we say to Hashem, we want to respond to the Ayeka call. We want to know what our purpose is. We want to fulfill our mission. And we are here, Hashem, waiting to do that. We are offering our Adam one dignity, splendor, creativity to you, Hashem, so that we can fulfill what you need us to do in the world. I wish you and all your loved ones a Shana Tova, Tiva Tova. Thank you for reading and responding. 
and engaging with me this year. I look forward to more next year. And please God, it should be a productive, enriching, insightful and peaceful year ahead for all of us.